Hello everyone and welcome to Lost in the Real. Today I'm going to be going over the new film Nine Days, a metaphysical sci-fi drama that many people will be describing as the live-action version of Pixar's Soul. Though I totally understand that comparison, I also believe that this movie is so much more than that. And before I dive right in, make sure to stay tuned after this review for exclusive interviews that I got to have with the cast and the writer-director of this film. So, let's get into it. Nine Days is written and directed by Edson Oda. It stars Winston Duke, Zazie Beetz, Benedict Wong, Ariana Ortiz, David Reisdahl, Bill Skarsgård, and Tony Hale. A reclusive man conducts a series of interviews with human souls for a chance to be born. Going into Nine Days, I knew next to nothing about it, and I am going to do my very best to allow you to go into it the very same way. All I had pieced together so far was that it starred a stellar cast and people had been comparing it to Pixar's Soul. What I wasn't prepared for was to experience one of the most beautiful, thoughtful, and original pieces of filmmaking that I have seen in years. The movie follows Will, a man who lives isolated in a humble home in the desert where he spends his days watching over television screens that happen to be different people's lives playing out before his eyes. A horrible occurrence happens to one of the humans that he watches over and so leaves a vacancy on one of his screens. He begins an interviewing process of multiple souls who have nine days to prove to him that they deserve a spot on that television and a chance to live in the human world. This is writer-director Edson Oda's feature directorial debut, and you could forgive me for being completely shocked by this fact. This is extremely experimental and risky filmmaking that could have gone wrong in so many ways, but the young director adapts his script to the screen in a way that is so assured you would think that Oda was a veteran in the field. Nothing about this screenplay would have been easy to translate to the screen. The the plot is so out there, the messages and themes are at once simple yet profound, and the ambition is wildly grand. And although the movie is a bit of a slow burn, once you surrender yourself to it and let it all wash over you, it is a fully realized and immersive experience. The cast that Oda has assembled here is simply magnificent. Winston Duke, who shined in Jordan Peele's Us and Black Panther, plays completely against type here as our lead protagonist, Will. Duke commands the screen in every scene he is in with a restrained and contemplative performance, although boiling inside is grief, anger, and regret. This role could have possibly been played by anyone, of any race or gender, but after seeing this film, Duke inhabits the role so fully that I couldn't see any other performer pulling this off. Benedict Wong, also a mainstay of the MCU as Wong in Doctor Strange, is almost the antithesis to Duke's will. He brings a sense of balance to the film with his much-needed comedic relief and sense of romanticism and heart. And with the rest of the cast who make up the interviewees, each one of them inhabit this shell of childlike wonder, but they grow upon that with their own perspectives, energy, and unique qualities that make them all special. I must point out Ariana Ortiz as Maria, though, who, although has a much smaller role to play here, has some of the most devastating and sincere moments in the film, including a scene that is quite possibly one of the most breathtaking sequences I have ever witnessed in cinema. There will be some jaded people who have closed off or cynical hearts who will probably brush nine days off as some sappy existential mumbo-jumbo. And that's okay. 
We all derive meaning from things differently based upon our own personal experiences. And that is what makes each and every one of us special. And with this film, and only if you allow it, you will leave with a different perspective and outlook on life. Nine Days is not here to necessarily give you enjoyment. It has arrived to open up your eyes to see the world in a different way, to help you grapple with and try to peel back the layers of the human condition, to reaffirm that every experience and moment that you have means something, as do all of the moments of every human being around you as well. As the final scenes of Nine Days came to a close, I found myself at once overwhelmed, but also full of joy. I proceeded to watch it twice more and still had a hard time putting into words what this cinematic achievement meant to me. And I'll just leave it with this. It's now time for you to experience it for yourself. So I will be giving Nine Days five violins out of five. This is a film that comes along once in a lifetime. It is an eye-opening, life-affirming masterpiece that deserves to be seen, discussed, and dissected for years to come. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Real. Make sure to keep watching for my exclusive interviews with writer-director Edson Oda and the cast. Hello guys, my name is Sean Jackson. I'm coming to you from that hashtag show. How are you two doing? Wonderful, Sean. How are you? Doing very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm just going to dive right into it because we don't have a lot of time. But uh, Winston, uh, you command every single scene that you have in this film and you're in almost every scene. Uh, so that's very impressive. Uh, but what about Will drew you to him? I saw a lot of opportunities with Will. I saw a lot of opportunities. One, as an actor, I, I watched, I, I, I always read scripts as both an actor and as an audience member. And I love going on these journeys, right? So I love, if I would go on a great journey as an actor, I believe the audience would go on a really great journey too. So when yeah. I, I had that experience, I was like, this is cool. And then when I was looking at the scenes themselves, I said, man, there's some cool acting that could be done here because a lot of Will's um, way of communicating with the other um, characters is very performative. Yeah. You know, he is trying to have a specific impact. He's a walking, talking stress test. And he's trying to see how people would behave under pressure. So I said, man, there's so many things I could do inside these spaces here. And this is really cool. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing performance. It really is. Uh, Zazie, I'm going to go to you real quick. Mm -hmm. um, with Emma, uh, you just bring this sense of childlike wonder that I loved so much. Uh, you're just so good in this movie. Um, what, uh, have you gained any insight on life from playing Emma? Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I, I, I think in the, in the moment, for sure, I felt very, uh, like, these are lessons I should carry with me <laughs> uh, in terms of staying in wonderment and staying in, in kind of staying interested in what's around me. And, um, you know, we were talking about, we've talked about a little bit already, but um, this sort of childlike wonder was something that I was going for of, um, you know, how, how does a child see the world uh, and everything is, is, different and and new and I think for Emma um, that energy is very strong and so I I did feel kind of how in my present do I remain yeah do I remain interested in in everything uh, which is why I think that this film is kind of this like lovely sort of life affirming story I think it encourages that kind of thinking yeah, life affirming is a great words for it because it really is. Mm. Uh, so I guess I'm out of time, but thank you so much, you two, for talking with me. And thank you so much, Sean. So, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. 
Good. It's so nice to meet you guys. Uh, Tony, I wanted to start with you. Um, Alexander is definitely uh, a little bit of a different character than you've played before. Uh, so why were you drawn to this particular character and how is he different than some of the iconic characters that you have played? Um, I don't know. I think he's a little like Buster Bluth, don't you think? Well, um, no. <laughs> um, but uh, I think I was drawn to him to that just because he was um, different. And um, I, I read the script and I, the message of these souls that we all play looking into life and wanting so desperate to have these moments and how much I take for granted that message to be able to kind of bring that to life. And after talking with Edson and hearing how, where it kind of came from his own story of with his uncle and I know it was a really special moment. I just, I really, honestly, Sean, I just feel really grateful to have been given the opportunity because it's, it is very different than what I've, what I've typically done. Absolutely. Uh, you did amazing in this role. Oh, right? thanks. <laughs> I can't get past your background, Sean. It's just <laughs> really sorry. top notch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ariana, I want to go to you. Uh, you have some of the most beautiful scenes in this film, uh, including probably one of the most breathtaking scenes in cinema that I have seen in a very, very long time. Uh, what was it like filming that bicycle scene? Ah, uh, it was magical. It was magical. It was long. <laughs> it I was bet. a very long. It was a very long day, but it was really, it was really magical. I think the whole team really worked together, and you know, Winston and Benny were were there, like you know, really, really doing it all. And our cinematographer, I remember, I remember at one point we were we were we were we were getting in close. I don't want to give it away because it's very special, but um, I remember our cinematographer like taking down the camera and being like okay, that was magic. We got it. So that was, yeah, it was very, I'll never forget it. Absolutely. And how did you bring your own personal perspective to Maria? Well, I, I really connected with um, the youth, you know, she's a brand new soul. So I, you know, I used to be a, a young girl. So I really connected with, with, with that youthfulness of her that she's new to all of this. She doesn't even quite understand the things that she's feeling and and I, I I feel like she has rediscovered in rehearsals her ambition and how much she really wants to win the prize of being alive so I, I certainly connected with that in my own ambition in the in the world so yeah yeah absolutely well congratulations thank you and David what yeah. was your favorite experience uh from being a part of nine days oh my favorite experience I'm going to talk about my, my partner in real life. Actually, Zassi, it's a movie that Zassi, uh, who plays Emma, and I, we've been together for a while. And, and this movie, we could do, do it together, which meant, meant two months of living, you know, in Salt Lake and hiking together. And then I think talking about these themes while making a movie about how beautiful life is and how beautiful love is. It, it was kind of like an amazing, to, be, to make that with a partner, I think was a very special experience for me so yeah absolutely well thank you so much you guys for uh being a part of this and talking with me today and uh congratulations on this beautiful film thank, thank you, you sean. thank you so much take care guys thanks sean so how are you two doing today really well ray thank you, ray, thank you. your neon brick wall <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Try to spice it up a little bit. Uh, so thank you so much for talking uh, to me today. Uh, Edson, uh, this movie is so beautiful uh, and incredible. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is actually my favorite film of the year so far. Oh, wow, uh, thank you. Thank moved you. to tears by it. So oh, thank, thank you. you so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to know really quickly, uh, this is such an experimental and risky uh, film. Yeah. So were you ever nervous or afraid when adapting your scripts to the screen? Oh yeah, I think all the time, you know, it's just like, it, it, it's, it's interesting. You never know if it's gonna work or not until, you know, you're, you have your movie, you know, finished. But uh, I prepare myself a lot, you know, I do, I work really, really hard. So I knew that I was trying to minimize, you know, uh, possible problems or mistakes or issues. So of course they will, you know, always like show up. And, uh, but at least I was, I, I, I think I was so prepared that I was able to just, you know, uh, uh, solve them as quick as I could. 
and right. uh, and make it the decisions very like uh, instinctual, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, but it was it was it was it was it was nerve wracking, man. It was very 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 like nervous, but it was just move forward and keep going, keep going. And things were starting to get, you know, better. Yeah. I think you were able to translate your words to the screen so well. I just, it was amazingly done. Uh, what was your inspiration in creating this story and what was your drive to make it happen? I think this story, the, the big picture, uh, comes like struggles it was going through, you know, um, in, in, in life and just my inability of seeing, you know, uh, what's, what's in front of me. Uh, the mm-hmm. moment that I had in front of me. And I think it's so, so easy for us to just think of like goals. When I achieve that, I will be happy or this will happen or something like that. That's hard to think of the reality we, we're living now as a goal they already achieved, you know? And mm-hmm. for this souls it would be this case, right? Because they, they're running for, you know, this competition. And, uh, but, and then they, they are, they're running to, get the chance they're having now. So uh, I think come from that realization, what if we're living now is like a, a chance that possibly I'm waiting because I'm focused too much in the future. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Benedict, I'd love to get to you. Hello. Uh, your character of Keo is almost the antithesis of Winston Duke's will uh, in a way. Uh, mm-hmm. And also you bring some much needed uh, comedic relief to this film as well. Um, how does your character bring balance and meaning to this story, do you think? Well, being the co-worker and, you know, he's kind of, he's, he's the old, he's the oldest character, but the biggest kid, I think, mm-hmm. uh, you kind with uh, Edson, uh, you know, he's, 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 he's the hope, the optimist and, you know, and though he's never been alive, he's, he's, he's still, uh, romantic about life, you know, and, and, uh, and, he, he 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 vicariously lives through these screens and wants to experience it and and cherish these moments you know so he's quite an innocent to this but yet he's 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 seen it all before as well but when he becomes like the wise sage you know he's the devil's advocate and he doesn't he, he calls he calls will out you know he tries yeah. to call and there's a frustration there but he's like he's trying to pull him out he can't quite yet do it and and it, it, it is a, a real sadness but you know hopefully when we get to the end you know Absolutely. all right sean we got to wrap this up okay well thank you so much you two i really appreciate you talking to me and congratulations on this beautiful film oh, thank, thank you, you sean appreciate you. it thank you. Thank, you. thank you thank you take a lot for everyone to say that they've moved to tears as well you know i mean and, and that's it's a personal private moment when as an audience member yeah yeah you know and and, and i think that's what audiences are 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 having so thank you absolutely thank Thank you you. all the best